Okay. Uh, historical society? Today, yeah, just a minute. I'll just say the date first. Uh -huh. um, today is uh, September 20th, 2015. This is Carol Garlow. I'm at the home of Frank Sharp at 245 West Higgins Lake Drive. And it's a beautiful sunny day. And Frank, um, if you would make a statement that this recording will belong to the Roscommon Area Historical Society. This this here associate recording recording yeah you know, uh, historical society. Mm -hmm. It'll be ours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Whatever. You agree to that. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Uh, well, we'll start out by asking you who were the first people in your family that came to this area. This area mm -hmm. be my grandfather. And what was his name? Daniel. Okay. Ty uh, Daniel Tyler Sharp. And when did he come? 1898. Wow. Did he buy land or did he come up this here? This is a homestead. I got the deed. Really? I still have the deed. Perfect. I have some other things that you might want to look at. Mm -hmm. Or make, cop make copies of. We can make copies of things. Of things. Yeah. Uh, I can get them. I don't know which box is in. He was questioned about how a homestead was. How many acres did he buy? At the time, he bought 80 acres. Well, this is just taxes. This is all stuff that contained way back. There's, we're looking at a little uh, box about There's two. eight by what 16 or inches and it's full of wonderful pieces of paper it looks like. <laughs> a little treasure chest. If I know I could have given you well, that's okay. We, we don't need to see the actual paper. We believe you. Anyway, he wrote to the state uh, to obtain, and if he could go on the property, and it was, the letter was, was back in the state saying that he could. Oh, okay. Gave him that permission. That was part to of the homestead, homestead thing. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Do you know if the property had trees on it or had it already been lumbered off when he bought it? I can it? prove that. See this picture says Dan Sharp Farm, Markey, Michigan. See the there trees. There are no well, there are no five trees, trees. <laughs> small trees. Oh, a lot of stumps. I'm seeing stumps. Yeah. Oh my. Far as you can see. A windmill, a log. Is this the house? Log house. Mm -hmm. and a That's farm. in that historical. Garish book too, oh, and then the Marky one too. Mm -hmm. Good, so, uh -huh. good, very good. That is wonderful. So, do you know how soon after he arrived, he already has his building? Oh, I'm going to so. say about 1910. Oh, okay. That's a copy. Yeah. Of the right. original. Right. Very nice. So, when he came here, was he a single man, or did he have a family? No, he married, and then there was um, uh, Ever. Zeolus, then Fisher, and Tyno. He had three. When he came here, they already had three? Right. Mm -hmm. They was my uncles. Mm -hmm. My dad was born here, though. Oh, okay. My dad was 16 years younger than his... Oldest next brother? Bro his brother. Mm -hmm. Youngest brother. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, my grandmother was 42. Wow. At that, that time. When, yeah. So when they came here, do you, where did they come from? Flint. Okay. And did they come because they wanted to farm, or what brought them up here? Uh, he, I think it was because it, they were still lumbering at the time. So he had a job? And then there was an uh, ad in different papers about homestead up here. Mm -hmm. Pretty much barren land, you know, there wasn't uh, hardly anything here. Do you know what he had to pay for that land? No, I don't. No, it's... Somebody said at one time at ten cents an acre, but I wouldn't want to verify that. Well, they had they have so many years to establish themselves too, didn't they? Right, five years. Mm -hmm. That's on the deed. Mm -hmm. Five years, then they get the deed. So the the deed is five years newer than the, the, actually when they came on the land. Mm, neat. So they came in 1898. With three small children. Right. So did he acquire his animals right away, or how? do you know how any of that happened? Uh, that I don't know for sure. You know, everything was transported by railroad. You know, at the time, there were no roads here or anything like that. But you're a long ways from a railroad out here. Yeah, it's 10 miles mm. from the railroad. Mm-hmm. This one, but I can verify the lumbering thing because when I was a kid, four, five, six, seven years old, maybe older, that all through the woods here, that the trees that they cut down in the tops, mm -hmm. laid on the ground and rotted, mm -hmm. and we used to go with a wagon horse wagon. We never owned the horse, but we used Burleson's mm. and then uh, pick up pine knots out of the trees. Oh. And what did you do with them? That's what we burned. Oh, for your heat? Yeah, they was like coal. Really? They're hot. They'll melt a stove if you aren't careful. Really? Mm -hmm. They didn't rot, but the rest of the tree would be was rotted. Gone. Was gone. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And my grandfather... Oh, I didn't know that said many at times when he first come here, he could walk clear across this 80 acres while putting his feet on the ground. Across the fallen timber? Right. No kidding. They didn't take very little of it. Hmm. And I know that. Mm -hmm. um, Was he able to utilize that to build his log house? What they left? Well, the log house that they, he built was a log house someplace else. Oh. And it was abandoned. Oh. And he brought the, got the logs and brought them over and, and uh, built that. Oh. What happened to it, it finally rotted so bad that uh, we tore it down in 48. Oh, okay. Where, what year were you born? 35. 35. Okay, so this was your father's parents. Then what happened to all his children? Did most of them stay in the area? Oh, oh they passed away years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, but I mean, did they all stay here as adults? No. As soon as they were 16, 17, they went back to Flint. Oh. All of them. Oh. Except my dad didn't. Okay, so he's... Yeah, they didn't care stayed. for you up here mm -hmm. at all. They was from the city... And, uh, well, your grandmother, what was her maiden name? Grizzle. How do you spell that? I don't know for sure. Because oh. I've never seen it. Oh, you never saw it written? No, Drizzle. Never did. You're saying drizzle. Huh? Dr it's, it's Scottish. Mm, okay. Yeah. So uh, my, qu my thought was maybe her family was still back in Flint, too. There's nobody in Flint anymore. No, but I when mean, they moved up here in 1898, they left their family, more than likely. Their brothers and sisters, or, or no? Well, this where it really gets into a little bit of uh, uh, history. 
Um, hmm. Like my when uh, my grandfather that was born, Horace Sharp. Mm -hmm. But his his mother is a Tyler. That was her last name, her maiden well, name. Well, yeah. Hmm? That was her maiden name. Her, la her, his mother was a Tyler and married a Sharp. Yeah, married for Sharp. Mm -hmm. Okay, when my grandfather was um, living in Flint and so on, when he was a year old, he was working in New York and fell off a building. Got killed. Oh, wow. And this, you can look it up on computer and mm -hmm. so on. Okay, his mother, friends, passed away when he was four. Oh, my goodness. So, he had older brothers, older sister, and there was one born after him. It, it died shortly. So he would, my grandfather would be the youngest of the surviving. Mm -hmm. His sister got cancer and passed away in 1912. Mm. His older brother passed away from fever in at 14, when he was 14 years old. Mm. So it left him the only survivor. Really? So he didn't have brothers and sisters uh, that he left in Flint? He's looking for something. Can't find it. Maybe, maybe this is it. I think this is part of it. Okay. Anyway, his his my grandfather's grandpa raised all of them oh, wow. in Flint. Okay. But his sister and all the rest of them were born in New Jersey. Oh. So my grandfather was born in Flint, but his brother and sister were born older. That's a picture of my my grandfather. That's his his yeah. grandpa his grandpa. Right. Okay. And my, and that's my grandpa. Uh huh. His older brother and his sister. Oh, okay. So this was his mother's father. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. His maternal grandfather. Wow, neat picture. Well. Taken in flat. He, he's a sea captain for the Vanderbilts. No kidding. And we just donated, just in the last year or so, he kept a flag off the Spitfire, which is a ship that was used during, a, a battleship used during the Mexican War. Oh my goodness. And here's the pictures of it. And who, what museum did you donate it to? It's in the Navy Historical 
in Washington, D.C. now. It just got there. Wow. That is awesome. Boy, it was in pretty rough shape. Yeah, that's why uh, I'm the only one left, you know, really, of all. Okay. And, uh... Did you have that here at the house? Yes. Wow. And, uh, I decided I, it was so uh, fragile that any more touching it just almost disintegrates. Yeah, I bet. It looks like it. This is 1846. Let's see. How many stars? Twenty-eight stars. That is wonderful. Well, you did a good thing to give it to those people. Well, yes. Well, sure. I'm going to just read this so we have it. This is from Scott Peters, who I know. He's quite a knowledgeable person at our Michigan Historical Museum. It says... Dear Mr. Sharp, in 2013 you offered the Michigan Historical Museum the flag from the USS Spitfire which fought in the war with Mexico in 1848. The flag was previously owned by Daniel Tyler of Flint, Michigan, who lived there from 1870 until his death in 1900. Mr. Tyler is thought to have served on the USS Spitfire. Because of the flag's national significance, would you be willing for the museum to forward the flag to the Naval History and Heritage Command in Washington, D.C.? If so, Please sign the enclosed form and return it in the enclosed envelope to the Michigan Historical Museum so that we may send on the flag to the Naval History and Heritage Command. A second copy of the form has been enclosed to keep for your records. Thanks for your consideration, and we hope to hear back from you soon. Scott Peters, the Curator of Collections for the State of Michigan. Wonderful. For good for you. And then... Of course, Good for you. Uh, then I got different letters from uh, from Washington D.C. From Washington D.C. Yes. Uh huh. Sure. sure. Well, that was wonderful. They probably have a rec record. Do they have good records of like of Tyler's service? On the there show? wasn't much records of it, but there is records of it. He was a sea captain mm -hmm. for the Vanderbilt because he on a private ship then. Well, on the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. But it would have been on a ship owned because by the Vanderbilt. The Historical Society in Lansing, for two years they checked on this. They couldn't believe it. This whole thing, really. Uh -huh. would. But for two years, and finally they, it was proven. Good. Everything I said. Good. Well, that's wonderful. Good for you. And uh, so, uh, there's more letters and stuff. They've been right back for it. This is the latest one. That's amazing. You can tell it's Washington, D.C. Yep, sure enough. And uh, you can see the letter inside the, here that they just wrote. Okay. Well, I wonder what they're going to do with it. How they'll ever. Oh, it's going to be. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. going to seal it or something and preserve it. Yeah. The rarity of the flag with this number of stars along with its connection to the Navy's involvement makes this object a fascinating addition to the permanent artifact collection. The signed deed of gift you provided has been countersigned. A copy of this form is enclosed for your records. Thank you again for your generous generation. Generous donation. Wonderful. Yep, there it is. You did it. Mm -hmm. Very good. It could be a pretty good story on my on that. You yeah. Know, uh, it's pretty much re kind of recorded and so on. And Have you shared this with any of the local papers or anything? With uh, the resorter. What's the name in town? He do oh, he doing his uh, Dan official. Yeah, the official. Okay. Yeah. He knows about it. Yeah. He'll probably write something up. That's and, amazing. Uh, That's wonderful. And your pictures of it are excellent. And uh, so that is very. There's a lot more. 
pictures uh, of that. So you had so, that flag here. What, where did, what did you have it in? Did you have it in the cedar chest or what? Well, it was pinned to a sheet. Oh. Because it was falling, falling apart. apart. Mm -hmm. And it would take up the whole living room. No kidding. Because a ship flag is a lot bigger than a battleship. Sure. Battle wow. Flag. But but your father had taken good care of it too then. Yeah. Well, my grandfather and all them for years. But my uh, <clears throat> he must have uh, uh, flowed this flag sometimes in his own place because you see them? The grommets? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A ship flag don't have them. Oh. Because they tear see. it right off in a hurry. Yeah. What oh. it is, it's it, uh, see the whole length of that? Uh huh. They put it on a pole. Sure. You know. Right. But he must have floated, I mean, uh, <clears throat> because there's eyelets in it. Yeah. You can see it there. Sure. And so Why on. Sure. Yeah. And so on. Well, that's awesome. Well, your parents must have taken good care of it after your grandpa died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that was good. Okay, let's get back to. I think we have so a little that's where flag story. It starts from, from Flint. Yeah, okay. And okay. there's a lot of it, and uh, so on. Uh, but they must have felt it was quite an opportunity there's a lot of, to come up here. That's his wife, Hannah. Oh, nice. These are tint type, you know. Yeah. This awesome. This is a picture of him, him, many of them. I got a lot of them. I guess, aren't they cute? Darling. Yeah, there are many of them. Now, wh who is going to, after you're gone, who is getting all this stuff? Going to keep it? No, I don't want, no. I'm asking you, who are you going to pass this on to? Probably Mike Tyler. Oh, okay. My son. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. So, just so he knows all this. He runs a park. Uh-huh. Store. Yeah, he came and um, talked to our historical society one time. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Maybe last you year know, or the year before. He retired at 32 <laughs> with a pension. Really? From what? Army. Oh, good for him. <laughs> good for him. So. Okay, let's get back to your grandpa came here in 1898 and he farmed. Was he able to make a living farming here? Pretty much, yes. Well, kind of farming, mm -hmm. you know, like it was, you know, they raised crops and stuff mm -hmm. like that and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, he did all right then. Did he ever acquire more land or was this? Yes, he did. Right across the street. Oh, and to the lake? Yep. How much did he have there? I don't know. No, I really don't understand all of it. But his summer home that he built, had they built and rented it on the lake, still exists. Oh. They moved it from, it was straight down from the store. From the South Peaks, from the Sharps Corner store? Straight down to the lake. Okay. On the left. Okay. And uh, I got some pictures of it. So who a little bit. Who owns it now, do you know? I have no idea. Oh, okay. That I don't know. When you say they moved it, like just a couple lots over or what? Oh, no, from one end to the other end of the park. Of what park? Right here. Is this already the state park across here? That's the campgrounds. Oh, it is. Okay, so they went, so he, it was on the land that became the state park? Yeah. And they moved it? Off of that land? Off that, down to the other end. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it still exists. So is that where, like, Jeanette's live, or who... who oh, Jeanette's? Yeah, is it... Oh, you know what? I'm yeah. Oh! Well, they went well, that was, They went to our church, Jack and Harriet. Oh, they did? Yeah. yeah see, I know the ones before that. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Is that the but house? But they've been there. Uh, I don't know how they acquired... But it was through my grandfather. Is that the house you're talking about? The one that no, they live in? No, no the no. one next to it then. One with the roof peaks like this. Like a pyramid? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, we'll have to take a peek. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, there was some connection with uh, Danette and so on. Jeanette, then there was what's called Aunt Elmer. Uh, what was her last the, name, you know? And so on. I don't know where the connection is with that. This gentleman has boxes of interesting things. Hmm? I said, this gentleman has interesting boxes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow, Miss Alice DeField. Right. Who was that? Uh, that was a connection somewhere or another. She, as far as I know, she never was marrying a school teacher. Huh. And that she had a cottage. They built a house down there. Yeah. And for years that was her place. Then uh, when she got older or something, they sold it to sergeants. Floyd Sergeant. Okay. And then there was Struble's. And they lived in a log place there wow. as a summer home. Wow. This is a collection of leather postcards uh -huh. that are stamped. And they go back to, what, 1901 or... I'm, I'm not... On this one, uh, I can't tell the date. Some of them you can make it all. Yeah. It, they're hard. Wow. All kinds. And most of, most of them have holes along the edges been offered a thousand dollars for all that. I bet you have. It's yeah. very interesting. First time you ever see them? Po yeah. Little postcard? It is. Hmm. 1906 this one says. Wow. Sure enough. 19 one cent penny postcard. Well that's amazing. So who was this Alice DeField? Yeah. Who was she? She was a school teacher, boy, I understand. Then she but was she up came here during here in the, the summers. Summer. I see, okay. And uh, she had a lot to do with the property here across the street. The property that became the state park? Yes. Okay. And my dad's first house he built to be right straight, right L driveway down to the lake. Oh, okay. Built a house down there. Well, no, so did you make a living building houses after a while? Your, uh, your, grandpa, uh, my, uh, your grandfather? Dad? Oh, your dad did? Yes. After your grandfather was gone? No, before. He was still alive? Yeah. Okay. But, but the other... But this is our supermarket. It used to be on the corner. Okay, this is a picture of Sharp's Corners about 1927. See... It's they a gas changed. Station they quit all kinds of farming or cattle or, or anything and just had that. So they made a living with the store. Yeah. After the farming subsided. Up to 1939, they built a new one, which is a gift shop here. Oh, the Treasure Treasure Island or something. That was on the corner. That oh. was built in 39. I remember them building. It. I was only four or five, but I used to run around on it. When, why that's building it? I can remember uh -huh. that. Wow, wow, good for you. Then, when was it moved to where it is now? Uh, my brother inherited everything. Everything goes the youngest. There's no dividing. Really? My dad got everything. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Your dad got your dad got everything from his father Horace, and your father no, was Daniel. No. Well. From uh, my grandfather, my dad got everything from his dad, which is Daniel Tyler Sharp. Okay, Daniel Tyler Sharp was your father's father. Right. Who was Horace then? That was his that, father. That's my grandfather's father. Okay. That's too bad, Mark. Yeah. I don't have that right yet. 
Your father was Daniel, and his father was Daniel Tyler Sharp. And my dad is Daniel R. Sharp. R. Okay. Richard Sharp. Okay. And your and his father was Daniel Tyler Sharp, and his Daniel Tyler's father was Horace. Horace. Okay. Horace. Well, that's yeah. what I have. Okay. That was your father's grandfather, and then. Okay, how many children did your parents have? Oh, just me and my brother. What's your brother's name? My brother? Mm -hmm. Uh, Dick or Richard. Okay. And he's gone. He's been gone. Okay. And did he, how many children did he have? Six of them. Six? But they passed away, passed away young. All of them? No. All the boys did. Really? 28 and 41. Wow. Uh, uh, so oh, he, he still has some of his ancestors. His descendants are still yeah, alive. Uh, That's okay. And uh, how many uh, children did you have? Just the two. Tyler? Mm -hmm, the oldest, and then Andrew, the and younger. Okay. Tyler lives here, and uh, Andrew is an attorney in Kingman, Arizona. Oh, wow. He left, and he went a long way. <laughs> well, yeah. And Tyler is an electronic engineer for the Army for the helicopters. They're oh, both educated. Yeah, I guess so. Andrew owns half owner in the Shooter's Outfitters. Oh, wow. You know, be like uh, Jay's or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, no kidding. Only much bigger. Uh huh. Wow. It's the, the st uh, his store is fourteen thousand four hundred square feet. Jeez, isn't that something? Wow. Over three million dollars for the inventory. And he's in, a, in and he and he's an attorney. You hmm? said he's an attorney. Did you say he's an attorney? He's an attorney. Yeah. So does he have a law practice in addition to all this? I don't think so. He, I don't think so, not right now. Mm -hmm. I think he's so tied up with that store. Well, I guess. <laughs> wow. But he's a licensed wholesaler and uh, retailer of uh, guns. Mm -hmm. And that's from growing up here. You probably taught him to hunt. There was nothing to hunt. <laughs> and... Uh, how did, how, did he, how did he become interested in that? I don't know. Huh. Really. I really don't know for sure. Uh-huh. I called him when my dad passed away and left three guns mm. he had. Mm -hmm. I'm not a gun person at all. Was your, I don't care about guns. Was your father a gun person? No, not really. Not really. He had a double barrel shotgun that, that his brother gave to him when he was a teenager. Oh, wow. Wow. So, it's probably 100 years old. Sure. Well, and, I'm uh, sure Andrew was happy to receive that. And then guns. I called Andy and I said, uh, you want your grandpa's guns? And he thought a minute and he said, I don't know, I got 600 of them now. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> so. Okay, well, Let's get back to the fact that your grandfather owned the property that became the state park. Uh, part of it. Okay, did he sell it directly to the state, or did someone else develop that, or how, do you know how that Well, went? he did sell uh, the house before the state bought it. The one that they moved? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a pretty a good move on his part, then. Well, now, I heard that he sold it for 500 on the lake. Is that all? No, I'm not positive, but uh -huh. it sounds reasonable to me. Well, that was in the 1920s. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. The state uh, park In opened. the 30s. He sold it about 38, or I think 1938. Oh, that late. I yeah. thought the state park opened like in 1927. Half of the other half. Oh, from, okay. From... The road going straight from the corner. Yeah, straight okay. down. That it was that part. They didn't require 
get all this till in the 60s. Oh, really? So what part did he sell them in 38? Hmm? You said he thought he sold it to the, he sold his part like in 1938. Yeah. Which part was that then? The cottage. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then they expanded yet beyond that in yeah, the 60s? Yeah, they want, bought, all oh, the Italians had bought my dad's place years ago. Mm -hmm. And there was, then this Miss Corbell Bell Dean owned some of it and so on like that. Mm -hmm. And finally, well, she passed away and I don't think she had any relatives I know of. Oh. I think it went back to went to the state part of it. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, Italian people uh, sold it to the state and built a new place, and finally it was all accumulated. Uh -huh. Hmm. Inter that's interesting. Yeah, they accumulated over many years, mm -hmm. trying to accumulate all that, and they finally did. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they own a good piece of the lake. Yep. They sure do. So, what year do you think they s was their first year to have this gas station? And Well, before they put the station in, they used to grow a little bit of vegetables and stuff, and they started out with this. Oh, like a vegetable Which it still exists. No kidding. Mm -hmm. my, my dad's Pontiac. This is Ralph Sargent's, there, Ralph Sargent mm. bought the first 10 gallons. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> is that a Model A? No, it's a Hudson. Oh, okay. Wow, that's... And you can see my my dad's right there, uh -huh. and my grandparents in there. And he was the first one to have, sell ice cream. Oh. Anywhere around here. For heaven's sake. It would come in, uh, they get out of Bay City, and it would come on a train, and it would be packed with dry ice. No kidding. Mm -hmm. used, we used, I don't know what happened to them. It used to be heavy canvas things, thick, like this, oh. you know, and it was kind of khaki color. Mm -hmm. And we used to have them around here. No, once they disappeared. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to them. But that's where the ice cream used to come in that. From Bay City or Saginaw or where? Bay City. Bay City? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they went to Roscommon to pick it up, to the train right. station. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then he used to make ice cream floats oh, way back. Oh, gee. Makes me hungry. Then he used to have his saying, uh, signs here, little signs. Uh-huh. And one of them says, sell uh, knee-high for a nickel. How far can you go with a quarter? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh huh. <laughs> so he had fun with it. Yeah. 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 Did your mother work in the store also? Yeah. Oh, not my mother. No. 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 And no. my grandmother. Your grandmother did. Yeah. She... What was your mother's name? My grandmother. No, your mother. What was your mother's name? Uh, Le Leona. Leona. Yeah. Maiden name? Haas. H a w s. I think so. Yeah. So was she born and raised up here? No. She, it's been a little mystery for sure. We don't know. Hmm. But the birth certificate, like mine, says uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, wow. That's a long way from Roscommon, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of uh, mystery there and mm -hmm. so on. And, we don't know for sure if that's right or not, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, your father, I recall, lived a long life. Yeah, he would have been, uh, he passed away on August 9th, and he would have been 100 October 26th. Wow, what year was that? He was born in 09. 09, so yeah. 2009. Yeah. Wow, that was a good long life. That was a, he lived longer than any of his brothers or sisters or any of them, you know. Yeah, I guess. Well, that bodes well for you. <laughs> that you had a father that lived that long. Had your mother been gone a long time? Oh, yeah, many years. Mm -hmm. We don't know too much about her. Oh, really? No, we don't. 
because I was only two, three years old when uh, they oh. separated. Oh, okay. So you don't even remember her? Well, I, yeah. I, no, not at that time, but I you met been her around her. You know. As an adult, you knew her? After she remarried mm -hmm. and uh, got a bunch of half-brothers and sisters. Oh, do you? Yeah. Where did she, did she go back to Arkansas or where did no, she go? No, she stayed here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. All over. Oh. Uh, Superior. I mean. Hesperia? Yeah, something like that. Over by Whitehall and. Right, right. That area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, tell us about what you remember about growing up in this area. Well, I think. One of the biggest things that really strikes me every time I think about it, it was pretty barren when I grew up. Up, It, <clears throat> it started just before the war, but then the war came and of course it quit, you know, and the population. Mm -hmm. But after World War II, it exploded here. Mm -hmm. it, it just, like this whole square mile, There was a church, Leonard Apps, and us. And that's it. Mm -hmm. In this whole square mile. There was nothing really? out there. Really? That's what we used to hunt back here and all sure. that. Sure. You know. What church was it? Marky Baptist on the corner. Oh, okay. Down here, you know, mm -hmm. one mile. Mm -hmm. Which where my it, grandparents Where it had. is now? It's over on... on uh, it's on Marky. Flint, Flint, Flint Road. Yeah. Is, that Flint where, Road. Is that where you're talking about, that square mile? As, I mean, is no, that where it no. was when you were a kid? One mile down, one mile across the square. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The church was just down on here, this, one on mile. This, mm -hmm. So on the would have been on the s southeast corner of that mile. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And now it's on the west. Well, now it's in the other it's a mile. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a mile over. Okay. Yeah, beyond. See. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, then the back Indians population here because the sergeants, the Floyd sergeant, owned so much of it and so on, all back here. Mm -hmm. Then they, all at once they sold it, I could have bought it for $10,000. Mm -hmm. so how much did they have? Like when you said they sold it, how much are you talking about? How much land? I think there was 160 acres. Oh, okay. Now, I'm not positive on it, but mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And then after they bought it and they started this big, big, big explosion here. It's not just here, it's all over. Everywhere that happened. Yeah. After the war. And the road ended down here at the corner, you know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of ended, you know, down in here. Mm -hmm. And there was a trail road that you went beyond uh, that. To go up along the lake shore. No, up. No, I mean going out to Old Twenty Seven. Oh, okay, going west. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it was just a. And, uh, Sand trail, huh? That was everybody's dump. Oh. Yep. Wow. Huh. Everybody dumped here, here. Sure. Here. Even sergeants with their milk bottles and okay. all that stuff. Everybody did out there. Did they have a dairy? Yes, sergeant's dairy in Truman. Oh. Gardner. Yeah, you know, okay. like Dick Gardner, but his dad had a dairy. Yeah, I did. I heard. I've heard the name, but I don't know. Don't know the history of the gardeners out there either. Well, they've been here a long time. Yeah. And then sergeants, sergeants was here before we were. Before 1898. Yep. Really. Uh mm huh. -hmm. We we need to get a history on that family. Oh, you're going to really go back now. Yeah. I wonder who's around anymore that could do that. Ron. Ron could. Ron could do Mullen, that. But the only one left. I'd rather call him. <laughs> that, but uh, of course, he's only going to remember so far back. I used to babysit him. Yeah, he's young. He's quite a bit younger than you. Yes. Yeah. He's in his sixties, but mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. I'm eighty. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so your your, if you would have playmates, so to speak, it would have been from the Apps farm. Amps never had farm. Oh, they didn't have, or wherever they, you said they were the only ones that lived in this square. Uh, Leonard Amps. Yeah. My dad went to school with. Oh, okay. And so on. They finally built a little place over here. It still exists. Oh, okay. And so I can remember being 
four or five years old going over there. Yeah. And my dad grew up with them. Oh, okay. With all the abscess. Mm -hmm. And Barb lived the longest, and she was six months younger than my dad. Oh, okay. Yeah, she did well. She did an oral that, history with But that would be Mrs. Aldridge. Right. If you Barbara F. Aldridge, yeah. Barbara. She's one of the 83 ahead of you. Oh, well, but, she's gone. Been yeah, gone. But, yeah, but I did an oral history with her yeah. uh -huh. probably, I don't know, 10, uh, 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, she was a sweetheart. And, uh... souvenir. There is nothing so minute or inconsiderable that I would not rather that I would not rather know than not. What does that mean? Oh, this is from 1923, Markey School. Minnie Visnaw, V-I-S-N-A-W, is the teacher. It lists all the students and several poems. Isn't that nice? Knowledge is light, ignorance is darkness. My son Very did all nice. this. He's a copy. Oh, okay. And he did all this. My son did. Your son, Tyler? Yep. I thought he did for night. Made it exactly as original. Even the stain marks. Well, yeah, it's wonderful. You want us to have a copy of this? Yeah, you can have a copy. Okay. You Very can nice. see Thank the you. abscess in there. And so on. Yeah, Barbara and Leonard. Benny. Mm hmm. Okay, and Danny Sharp, O D A N N I E. And Sharp with the E on the end. Do you still have an E on the end? <sighs> That's a little mystery. I don't know if my dad came up with that or what. How that come? Mine's got the E, my brothers don't have the E. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, All right. I checked back a little bit, and uh, my uncles and so on didn't use the E. Oh. Hmm. Now, Fisher did use it some. So, where this E comes from is... We're not sure, huh? Not for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think of that... So where did you go to school? Hold late. Right oh, there. How did you get there? Bus. Really? You had a bus already? It was two hour ride over, two hour hour back. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Oh my gosh. And uh, we was the first ones on, the last ones off. Oh my gosh. Because we're on the far west end. Sure. Because across the street is garage. Right. Oh my gosh. And sometimes we didn't get there. Until much later, because they didn't plow the roads much. Uh huh. So you, you got stuck. Have, had a day off, huh? So we all <laughs> had to get off and push the bush. Oh my gosh! But sometimes some of the kids would push one way, and I we push the other way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, and then in the spring it would bear, get buried in mud. I mean, mud would. The roads, all these roads were. Mud paved, mm -hmm. and in the spring you, they Gee. break up. Oh my gosh! Yeah, but and then you get down there by Home Lake, you know, it'd be flooded. Oh really? There wasn't no North Shore Drive. Oh really? Uh uh. I didn't know that. So you, which way did you go around? With the school was at the south end of the lake. You had to go down past the airport and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you. When, but the road used to go to the mounds, uh -huh. and then there was a bridge there, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And they go over that bridge and round the, round the lake. Yeah, that was a long build. trip, sure. Well, tell us about the mounds. With the mounds? Yeah. How big an area is that? That I couldn't tell you. Uh, mostly, I've been down there, never paid much attention to it. And... Uh, 
Has that all been developed? I have no idea mm. on that. But the, it's just the name. Of that area. Yeah. But if they called it that, there must have been some evidence of Indian Yeah, they activity. was, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But I couldn't tell you any more about that than mm -hmm. what they call it down there. Well, as when you were growing up, did you spend much time on Higgins Lake? On the lake? Mm -hmm. We didn't even have a boat. You didn't? Did you no. go over and go swimming? Go over where? Did you go over to go swimming? Did you go swimming in the lake? Oh, yeah. That yeah. was a big challenge. Had to be the first ones in, in May. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, we had to be the first ones in. So you drug your little brother along, did you? Yeah, yeah. my brother and there's one <laughs> down the lake. Oh my mm -hmm. God! In May, in the last May or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's cold. Sure. Well, I guess. Yeah. What else do you remember about the lake and activity on the lake? Well, here's for one example. We had a little problem with the state. The state. My kids are going down the lake all the time. Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven years old, and they brought them back one day. One of the officers brought him back and said they can't be going down there in the park. Hmm. And I said, I, I said, you better check the laws on that before we. I said we've been crossing that for almost a hundred years, and you can't stop and say we can't go down there anymore. Hmm. I said my kid has the right to go to that lake forever. You know. Oh no. Really. Yeah. About well, an hour later, come back and apologize. Good. You know, when you've been crossing a property mm -hmm. so many years, you know, they can't shut you off mm -hmm. or landlock you. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a law. Mm -hmm. That was the end of that. Well, good. good. Yeah, I knew about that law. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, sure. They, they couldn't stop my kids from going down the lake. Mm -hmm. The first First thing I asked him, I said, "Were well, they bothering the camper?" And he said, "No." Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that was. Did you more. did you fish? We didn't have a boat. Oh, you didn't have a boat. That's <laughs> but right. no, but we fished in the winter. Mm -hmm. Ice fish, yes. Did you? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. And but the big thing was. Uh, spearing mm -hmm. in the lake mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Through the ice? Through no, the ice or not ice? Spear, just spearing from the boat. Right. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we used to use other people's boat. We did more of that than anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, for suckers in the, in the spring and the whitefish in the fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, DNR had to stop it. You know why? It's sad. It really is. Well, people started coming up from the city, mm -hmm. and they fill a boat with full of fish oh. and take them out in the woods and dump them. No kidding. I seen that. Really? Wow. What a shame, huh? The, the native people like us, we used to go and get four or five and come home. Mm -hmm. You know. Sure. All the natives did that. Mm -hmm. They didn't fill a boat or just because they're there. Yeah, right. That's too bad. And, uh, yeah, that's why I say it's. And uh, then the suckers, we used to get more than that because we could smoke them. Oh. We used to smoke them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. But it was used. Yes. Like the deer. People mm -hmm. eat the deer. Why not? I seen them uh, piles of fish like that, and you talk about something smells oh, I from bet. a mile. Oh, oh God! Be terrible. People doing that. Yeah. Huh? And then they spilling the trout and everything else. The natives didn't bother them. Mm -hmm. They just got what they wanted, and that was it. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, they had stopped it. Well, they. You probably in your time. They. <clears throat> I remember spearing the suckers. Mm hmm. 
and they had to stomp down because they spear the, the bass and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, that's what happens. We abuse the privileges. They do. When did your family, um, when did electricity come out here? Do you, was that prior to, to well, when you were Yeah, I can tell you quite a bit about that. Okay. Back in 39, 38 and 39, they just started running the electric back around here. They run it to the store because the store was new and oh. it was wired for electric. Oh, great. The store, which is a gift shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that building there. Uh -huh. That was your parents, though. Hmm? That was your grandparents and your parents' my, place. My grandparents. But my dad built, built okay. it because he was doing the car work. Okay. And so on. Okay, then the war broke out, mm -hmm. and that stopped right there. Oh. That's where it stopped. Wow. But my dad built a garage, 20 by 20, just before the war, and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, when the war broke out, Mr. Zuloff had a contract with, uh, I think it's Garwood or whatever, uh, for defense. Uh, equipment and my dad came home one day and the garage filled with all these machines drill presses and <clears throat> laying and all this wow well there was no electric there <laughs> a few days later they come out and run the wire from the store over to the garage oh so we, they had electric yeah and who was runner. who was doing that who was Mr. Zuloff. How do you spell that? Z-U-E-L-O-F? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Anyway, he lived down there, uh, which just used to be a high slip road. Oh, okay. West Pine now. Mm -hmm. But he lived on the lake. Okay. He retired from that. And uh, when the war broke out, of course, they got hold of him if he would start up a shop and uh, make war equipment. And he did that in your dad's garage? Yeah. But, can you imagine a 20 by 20 garage? No. Being, <laughs> it didn't, I think he was in there about a month. Oh. And uh, it was way, you know, but they got the electric to there. Mm-hmm. So, but then they rented the, uh, the building next to the old uh, water tower used to be Waterman's, and then, then they had the plastic shop in there. Oh, in in Ross Common, in the village. In Ross Common, yeah, okay. on that hill, you know, kind yeah. of hill. Mm -hmm. That's <clears throat> it's a pretty good sized building. Yeah. Used to be the powerhouse. Okay. For Ross Common, and then, of course the there. So. So Mr. Zuloff made made his. <laughs> War equipment that he was hired yeah. in that building in Ross Common. Right. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Defense plant. Yep. No kidding. Levers and for the tanks and stuff like that. Oh. Mm -hmm. and he could put them right on the train. Right. Mm -hmm. Ship them to. They scattered it like that, so if we got attacked, mm -hmm. it, nothing, it wouldn't be in one place. Yeah. You that know, was a good idea. Yeah. And that's what they had scattered all over, you know, mm -hmm. little defense plants. My dad worked in it all during the war. Oh, I was going to ask if your dad had to serve. Yeah, they... Because yeah. he was doing that, he didn't have to go into the army. Right. Mm -hmm. And then us two boys, he's taking care of two, mm -hmm. my, me and my brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your mother was gone by then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Did your father remarry? Too many times. <laughs> That's all right. He's kept looking. <laughs> that that would that can be a real big That's problem. Hard. Sure, yeah. In sure. A couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, so who did you marry? Uh, Bonnie Smith, and uh, it was part of the Teeters. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Ken Teeter. Well, I knew Wayne. Wayne. Okay. Well, Mrs. Teeter married uh, there, and uh, 
and she, there was two girls, three girls, and one uh, boy, and I married uh, one of the girls. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's still living. She lives oh, in Arizona. She? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You were yeah, just... we weren't together very long. Well. There was a big problem with that. She was, they had maids and coats and stuff. So she never had to, she never knew even how to run a washing machine. Oh, wow. Never cooked an egg or cooked anything in her life. Wow. You know, it was all done. Uh -huh. Where did you meet her? Well, she worked at the restaurant, Lane's R restaurant there on Old 27. Oh. When, what when, was the name of the restaurant? Elaine. Elaine's? Yeah. I'm not sure, I haven't heard of that. And it's gone now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she worked there. So. Okay. Then you didn't remarry? No. No? You've been a, you've been a bachelor a while then. <laughs> Over 40 years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, good, I've for, never, good for you. Never dated anybody or never went with anybody? No. Since, uh, oh, for heaven's sake. No. How many grandchildren did the boys give you? Three. Good. Good for you. Mm. <laughs> okay, what, what else do you remember about going to school? So you graduated from Houghton Lake High School? I didn't graduate. Oh, what did you do? Did I, you skip I went out? to high school. <laughs> then what happened? Well, my dad left. Well, it was kind of a rule of the thumb. Uh, when you're 16, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. You probably have heard of that. Yeah, that's the way it used to be. That's the way it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you want to go any more than that, you're on your own 100%. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. Mm -hmm. And you can eat Al Bello and, and so on. I was, he went to school at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. next door. And it was all, it was pretty much the rules. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're 16, that's pretty hard to make a living. Yeah, what did you do? What did you do when you, quit school? When you quit school? Then I set pins. Did you? You know, yeah. bowling alley. Yeah. But you can't live on that. Ten cents a line. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. A lot of the kids, did, you know, that was tough. So did you, as soon as you were 16, did you quit school? No, I, I went part through the 10th mm -hmm. and so on, and I think theory really got tough, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so <coughs> I was doing construction work oh. and so on around here. Had you done that with your father? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. how many years did he... Build house? Did you build houses or cottages or what? Mostly? Oh yeah, many of them. Many, yeah. really. And um, yeah, he did a lot for the state too. Oh. Uh, built some down here in the park, mm -hmm. state Great. park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he worked a lot up there on the other end of the other end of the park or the conservation school. Oh, the, he the, built all most of that. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. Did you were you already old enough to help with that? I didn't help with that. No. 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 <coughs> and uh, he worked at Oscoda when they put the air base in. Oh, did he? Mm-hmm. So when did you get into the car stuff? And this go tell us about this go kart oh, stuff here. And the go kart? Yeah. Well, when I got out of the army. Oh wait, then stop. We haven't get. We don't have you in the army yet. When did you go in the army? Uh, I got drafted in '58. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you were 23 by then. Right. Wow. That was a little bit funny. Yeah. The, the sharps all lose their hair. Mm -hmm. I was pretty much bald by then. Really? And now me and another guy in the whole, all the barracks, just the two of us had to <laughs> <laughs> bald, kind of bald. 
Of course, I had a little bit more hair than I am now, mm-hmm. by quite a bit, but still, you know. Uh, you were bald. Yeah, going bald. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake. So that was a funny deal. I uh, got drafted at 23, mm-hmm. going in the army, and I was took uh, basic in Fort Knox. There wasn't no basic to it, really. I never marked. And they told us we're all clerical. All oh, right from the get go, huh? Yeah. And mostly college kids. Here, me, I'm just uh, not even finished high school yet. Mm-hmm. You know. Huh. And uh, so, after we gradu- after we got out of basic, <clears throat> they said, "Well, I got back there. I drove my car back after basic." So I had my own car, mm-hmm. and uh, they said, your orders hadn't come in. Well, we're going to put you in a fire and furnaces. So I did, for a couple months, I guess, two, three months, something like that. Then my orders come. They said, your orders are here. You got to pack up everything. You're going. I figured I'm going overseas. You know, someplace, yeah. cause everybody else did. Yeah. And uh, so I packed everything up, put my car off post and everything, and packed it all up as overseas. They wouldn't tell me. Oh. Them guys in the office. Oh, gee. I got no all of them and so uh-huh. on. You know. so they was pulling something on me. I didn't know it at the time. Uh huh. Got all packed up and so on. Here we go. You drove me over to another barracks. So that's right. There, there. So later, they told me report to this building. At the same base. Yeah. Where you Fort st- Knox. We were still in Fort Knox. Yeah. So I went over there. It was a commissary. Wow. So they said, this is where you're going to work. So, what did okay. You, what did you have to do? So they put me a job stocking shells. <laughs> then uh, Captain Ramsey one day come on, the captain, he says, they don't tell you nothing ahead of time. You know, mm-hmm. you don't know what's going on. Yeah. And so Captain Ramsey told me one day, he says, you're going to be in Class A's. You know what I mean? Full dress. You know what I mean? Not fatigues. Mm-hmm. Full dress. Okay. So I come in, full dress. And he told me, he says, you're in charge of the, all the cigarettes on Fort Knox. Wow. Distributing and so on. And, and you have your own outlet. That's a pretty good... Responsibility. Yeah, that was a big job. Did you like it? Well, well that's what I did. I uh, had a cage, and uh, cigarettes come in uh, 60 cartons to a box. That's wow. Uh, so I run that, <clears throat> and uh, the first month I run it or so, they come and told me I was $36 short. Oh, gee. I mean, you're talking about a lot of money because they yes. buy 10 cartons at a time. Yeah. And that was the main outlet for all of that, was, which you limited, 10 cartons mm-hmm. and so on. And I told the, uh, the mm-hmm. captain that I could make up for that because I had some, a sack, paper sack, like this big, like this tall, and some of them would get damaged, you know, oh. so on. And I'd throw them in there, see? Mm-hmm. And I said, he says, he says, that's the best they've ever done, he says. Hmm? <laughs> he says, so, you mean I asked him what I'm going to do with them cigarettes. You mean other people were short more than $36? Yeah. Wow. He says, and then I had the, the cigarettes, so it came out just about even, mm-hmm. you know. And I asked the captain, I said, what am I going to do with these here ones? And he says, oh, you can dispose of them. You know? 
Swamp. He didn't say throw him away. Mm-hmm. He says, yeah. I know what he's talking about. You got to sure. read between the lines yeah. exactly. on a lot of this stuff. Yeah. So I brought him home. I didn't smoke. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was good. I never. I, I gave him to my brother. He smokes three packs a day. Mm. And so Wayne Gardner and him, I woke up one early in the morning and they're out there. One for you, one for me. <laughs> Dividing up the cigarettes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I become more responsible. Well, I end up being uh, full responsible for all the money. Ten cashiers. In the commissary. Yeah. Really. And so on. Mm-hmm. So did you stay your whole service time at Fort Knox? I spent my two years there. Did you? Yeah. Good for you. And uh, <coughs> so I was con- I controlled the money mm-hmm. so on. And, and I had to proof, proof out cashiers. You know, I mean, they get done in a day and they put the money. They count it out and then I come along and proof it. You know, sure. So, yeah. Then they had a sack oh, about that big with leather bottom and canvas and leather top, two padlocks on the top. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd put all the money in there in layers, mm-hmm. so that each one they so the finance could check each each one out, mm-hmm. so on. And uh, so get it done on the, the two locks. Well, I had the key for one, but not the other one. Oh. See, that's proof that I can't get into it. Mm-hmm. And they had the key for the other one. Mm. And uh, doing that, Captain Adams didn't come over and he handed me a forty-five with a holster. Mm. And he says, you're in charge, and you can wear that any time. Wow. Because they give me the... So... I always had to take the money to the finance all the time. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. You liked it then? Yeah. You were glad, he, glad you didn't have to go overseas? Didn't have nothing to do with the military. Right. Nothing. Really? <laughs> nothing at all. Oh, my gosh. So, and then one time he come on and he threw a bunch of stuff, to, papers, to, plans and everything. He says... You're going to be in charge of uh, uh, changing a schoolhouse or to an annex. Oh, well, that was a nice challenge. Well, <laughs> you give me the key. Guess what was in there? Bunch of school desks. Oh, that they was on slats. Sure. You know the old ones. The old ones. You remember? Mm-hmm. And then you put your books. You know, yeah. like to, yeah. It was in there. And I said, what am I going to do with that? I called, and he says, you figure it out. That's your job. Hmm. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good enough. So I knew the guy over to salvage. In uh-huh. fact, I got real acquainted with him over time. Well, he always called me a day or two before they have their open sales. Uh-huh. And I could go in there. And I bought tools, wrenches, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh. Different stuff from there. You know, I, so I got real acquainted with him. I don't know why, but I did. I mean, so well, you know, he's just a friendly guy, Frank. Yeah, he, <laughs> we're good friends. He said, I'll send the truck over and uh, pick him up. He did. Well, that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Then I started to, uh, they told me where the shelving was and so on, so I went over to the the, where they had the trucks and stuff, you know, the, mm-hmm. and uh, went and got a uh, little short bed pickup. Oh. And I was hauling stuff. Captain Rand comes along and he says, Oh, you got went and got a pickup. And I said, Yeah, I had that one. And he says, He says, From now on, you call him and have him bring it to you. That oh. way you don't have to wash it and clean it. <laughs> <laughs> From the motor pool. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So they did. Yeah. He authorized it. Sure. So. You did well. Um, then, when you went in the service, did you already have your children, or was that 
Did they no, come I wasn't later? Married. You were still single. Single. Okay. Yeah. Um, then did you go back after your, you came back here then when you were discharged? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I the, worked for, and came back and for a job I worked for Earl Sugar. Oh, okay. You know, that gravel pit, mm -hmm. driving truck over to the block plant. Oh, that was good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop this for a minute because we have to...